I mean, it's like the rough model is for June 17, 2019, what the Commission commission is. It's not all over again. We come back. It would have resolved as you can. At this time, I'll introduce uh, Commissioner Terry Scruggs, Mark Perry McClain, at this time. Please rise. Most precious Heavenly Father, we come here tonight asking for blessings. But first of all, we want to thank you and honor your most precious name. Thank you for letting us live in the greatest country on the earth. And thank you for giving us one of the most wonderful counties in the state. Thank you for all of those who chose to serve you in a special way. And then the honor and the blessing that they do so. Thank you for their knowledge. Thank you for their wisdom. You know, Lord, thank you for everything you're going to present tonight. Even when them as they vote, and then you put you first in all the decisions that they make. And make sure that the county, the people, the citizens of this county, just know who is representing them and what good they're doing for their family. I want to thank you again for the many blessings you've given us. Thank you for the ability to vote. Thank you for those who fought for this country and died for this country, and those who are still fighting so that we have the freedom to vote and to meet in a public place without fear. I only pray. Amen. 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 Say aye. 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 Aye
This time I ask Commissioner Robinson and Commissioner Weather to come forward with special recognition. I just found out that this young man went to your, that we're going to give this special recognition to is the grandson of Ron Wick. Wow. Mm. So I don't know if y'all know Ron or not or remember him and mm -hmm. we went on the school board together. Mm -hmm. and, um, I thank the Lord for him. So this is, this is a very special deal. And also, let me tell you that in reading this, there is a state trooper that Diane and I have known for very long for all of our lives. And I was told that if this young man had not done the bravery and done what he'd done, that these folks would not, these young people would have not have made it. And survived in this soul. Resolution of the Board of County Commissions of Wilson County, Tennessee, honoring Connor Dow Benedetto for his Good Samaritan Act of Heroism. Whereas Connor Dow Benedetto is a citizen of resident of the Davidson County, Tennessee, who in the early morning hours of May 24, 2019, was driving on South Mount Jews Road in Wilson County, Tennessee. Whereas at that time, Mr. Dow Benedetto came upon a crash at the intersection of South Mount Jews Road in Stewart Street Pike, involving one vehicle carrying five teenage passengers. Whereas the vehicle had crashed into a utility pole and caused fire totaling the vehicle and trapping some of the teens. Whereas in a quick and decisive action, Mr. Di Benedetto heroically pulled three people out of the car, one of whom was unconscious, allowing all five teenagers to be transported to local hospitals and to recover from their injuries. Whereas Mr. Di Benedetto, when interviewed, made the following statement. I give it all back to God, for he was his grace that wants to heal. Now, therefore, it be resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of Wilson County, Tennessee, that we hereby honor Connor Dow Benedetto for his great, caring, decisive, and compassionate actions on May 24, 2019, risking his own life to save the lives of five of our teenage citizens.
I think so, because you sent me back again later in 2018 for, for a two-year term, so I appreciate that. Uh, but I'd like to talk to you about a few things that we have done this year. We've worked hard in the legislature, and the proof is in the pudding. I don't have to tell you guys how well Tennessee is doing. We were recently ranked uh, by U.S. News as uh, U.S. News as the number one fiscally uh, stable state in the, in the United States. I'm proud of that. Between January and March, we had over 4,200 new private sector jobs, and we've been promised or had commitments from uh, various companies for over 7,600 new jobs and 1.6 billion. Uh, and, and new capital coming into the state. Unemployment is at an all-time rate uh, right now. It's 3.2%. As of April of 2019, we have maintained a AAA bond rating. Uh, just to let you know, there's only 14 states with that distinction. Uh, this year, we were able to cut some taxes. And uh, we were able to cut over $22 million from the professional privilege tax. And for those of you who don't know what that is, there's several occupations in the state that pay a $400 tax. And we every year we pass it. And... Uh, it unfortunately goes behind the budget because we, if we can't find the money for it, regardless of what the legislature wants, if there's no funding, we can't do anything. This year, we kind of came up with a compromise and we cut out over 15 professions. Now, there were some that were left in there and they remind me of that when they see me out at the grocery store. <coughs> and we would have to get those, uh, those folks uh, moved out over the next few years. You know, how do you eat an elephant? Just one bite at a time. And we took one bite out this year. Um, we heard from our, our uh, CrossFit people and a lot of people that, that had gym memberships and, and uh, the Department of Revenue discovered this year that, that they thought they needed to collect tax on gym memberships and we heard from them overwhelmingly and we were able to find six million dollars to keep that tax from, from coming online and uh, Tennessee continues its commitment to broadband and this governor is no different than Governor Hassan. He believes in that broadband internet access is something that is, is, has become a, a pretty much a rock in Tennessee. It's not no longer considered a privilege. Uh, whether it be recruiting jobs to rural Tennessee or whether it be students to go home at night and do their homework, they need internet to get it done. And so we have made a commitment to try to get that rolled out statewide. And this year, again, the Department of Revenue decided that they needed to tax um, uh, fiber at the point of installation. And it, we, we kind of fought that in the legislature. There is an actual tax that they pay on that, and we're able to get that filled back and prevent that from being implemented. And, and, I was proud to get that done, and we saved some of our agriculture, uh, some of our farmers in the state over seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, and we made a two hundred and thirty-nine million dollar deposit into the rainy day fund. And I always like to say this, and it's probably not the most popular thing, but I just want you guys to understand. Uh, you know, as Republicans, when we run across, we tell you that we are conservative. And being a conservative means being a good of your money, it means making sure the spending doesn't get out of control. But I would suggest to you. That being a conservative also means that we need to watch our revenue as well. And so, any time that we make tax cuts at the state level, uh, it doesn't. It's not a decision that we make lightly. Uh, and this was a good year, and these tax cuts are appropriate. And I'm proud to see it done. A few other things that we did this year, uh, as you know, we were having an opioid crisis in Tennessee. I mean, we there's things that you want to be number one in, and things that you don't want to be number one in. And I tell people that that years ago, you know, if it weren't for Mississippi, we'd have been number fifty. In, and a lot of things, and, and so thank God for Mississippi, but we, one of the things, unfortunately, that we ranked very high over the last few years is opioid abuse and deaths associated with it. And this year, uh, we have changed the penalties for a class B felony for 50, uh, 15 grams possession, and if you have 150 grams of fentanyl, it's a class A felony. And so proud to see that uh, done this year. We, uh, we spent over uh, $27.3 million in the Kate Beckett waiver. And let me tell you a little bit about what that is. When they first came to talk to me about this, I thought, I'm not sure I want to do anything that touches Medicaid. Uh, but this was something that was suggested by Ronald Reagan back in the early 80s. And, and if you've ever met uh, a child with a severe, severe disability, the children that this affects have disabilities so severe that many of them cannot be left alone for five minutes at a time. And we were seeing families here in Tennessee that were bankrupting themselves. There's no health insurance that would pay for this. And so they were bankrupting themselves and ended up on ten care. In some cases they were divorcing and ended up on ten care. And uh, and so what we decided is if we're going to be on ten care, maybe we should uh, adopt the waiver that most other states in the country have adopted to go ahead and allow these children with specific disabilities to get on ten care and, and save the marriage and then save people from having to go bankrupt in the process. So I was proud to see that done this year. We found that in the budget, and, uh, and it worked out good for us. Um, we did something this year to protect our law enforcement. Uh, you've heard around the country of uh, these community oversight boards 
where, where subpoena power is given to private citizens, oftentimes with an agenda, with a very anti-law enforcement agenda. We took some measures in Tennessee to protect our law enforcement from that. I was proud to see that done. Uh, it's a good year for education, and I, and I want to say it real quick. I, mm. I, I see Dr. Ralph back there. I want to tell you that, that uh, it, 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 people respect that. Y'all have a good superintendent. We have a good superintendent here in Wilson County. People around the state, other superintendents, really look up to it. It's Ryan. So I want to thank her for, for the work that she does down there at the Capitol. Um, but this year, we made the largest ever investment in public education in the state of Tennessee's history over $200 million. Um, and, and we brought that up to six and a half million dollars that we're spending on it, over 55 million dollars for teacher pay raises. And, uh, and we actually passed a bill this year. Uh, Tennessee uh, has, has a variety of counties. Some of them are metro, some of them are rural. And here in Wilson County, we have school resource officers in every school. But you go over to Cannon County, you go to Cap County, some of these rural counties, they don't have that. And so we passed a bill this year and found the funding for $40 million to create a grant program for some of these rural schools to get school resource officers in that program. And, and I want to thank, I was talking with Terry Ash about this last year, and, and many times under the previous administration, they said it just couldn't be done. And, and Terry Ash told me it can be done. And, and I believe in the safety of our children who saw the proud to see this get adopted this year. Uh, we found that money in the budget. Um, I passed a bill this year, I carried it for uh, the lead administration, and it dealt with teacher pay and transparency. And, and every year, not every year, but many years, we put money in the budget specifically for teacher pay raises. And then you're at Publix, get your groceries, and you get an order against the, the, the bread aisle by a teacher telling you that they did not get a pay raise. And so um, the new administration came online and, and kind of asked the question, where is this money going? And, and we don't know. We're not suggesting that anything inappropriate is being done, but the, uh, the school boards have a lot of discretion on where they can spend their, their uh, uh, instructional component of the BDP funds. But what this bill does is it says any year that we put that in the budget, then next year you need to report back and tell us how that money was spent. So I was proud of that. That was a very popular bill. We got that passed this year. And a few things locally that we did, and then I'll let Senator Cody get up here all day long. He, he may regret to let me go first if I, if I talk about it today. Um, locally, Wilson County Schools is getting an increase of $3,031,000 from the uh, state of Tennessee. Lebanon Special is getting $654,000 more. Uh, from the state of Tennessee and the BEP. And uh, a few things of, of interest, specifically in Wilson County. And uh, I got to thank Jerry McFarland for this. Jerry McFarland came and picked me up last year, took me out to Cedars Lebanon. I met the park right out there. And, uh, and he started talking, and, and I'm sure he was hitting up Senator Pody as well about the state Ford farm across the road. And last year, thanks to the hard work of Senator Pody, we were able to secure the funding to acquire that farm. Um, and then later this year, I was able to get some money in the budget, $100,000. <laughs> to restore that farm. And we have worked, and I have heard about this for many years, but when people think about the Cedars Lake and State Park, they think it's all a state park, and it's not. Uh, Val, let me give my numbers, about 1,252 acres of the state park, and then there are thousands, thousands of acres surrounding that that are actually part of the Tennessee Forestry, which is part of the Department of Agriculture. That stuff is not really used recreationally. People dump their trash there. People go out there and party and use drugs. And, and the park rangers have no authority there. So this year, uh, met the Committee of Agriculture, um, with specifically with the Forestry Division, met with TDAC, and we are, I'm proud to say, I have, uh, it's happening now. It's not completely. Mm -hmm. It took place over 2,800 acres on the west side of Highway 231. It's now being moved over into uh, uh, TDAC and, and will be part of Cedars London State Park. So I'm proud of that. Like I said, we've been working with the second board historical thing. The last two things I have uh, uh, people ask me, what do you what do your constituents mainly talk about? Robo calls. That is the main thing that people complain about, I would say, since I've been state rep. Is there anything we can do about it? And unfortunately, that is handled almost exclusively at the federal level. Uh, but we did pass a bill this year that I co-sponsored that would increase the penalty uh, for, for robo calls or, or spoofing, which is where you get a phone call like, like when I get a phone call for myself, I don't know if you've ever had that happen. Somebody is calling you from your cell phone your own. And so we, we've uh, we strengthened the laws a little bit for that. I honestly, I'm not sure we can do much in Tennessee. That's probably happening overseas. But we are hindering your cries and we're trying to do something. And we are reaching out to our federal counterparts to try to do something. And the last thing is the emissions testing. Um, yeah, so emissions testing. You know, Senator Cody and I passed that last year with one of our colleagues from the other uh, the attainment counties or whatever that they were in at the pilots they were in it. We thought it was over. We thought we passed the law, we were done. We didn't realize 
how slow the federal government can be, how they can slow walk something and drag it out. And we are now pushing them. I mean, I, like you would not believe, we, we have a meeting every couple of months with them. There is a process, and, and the final waiver to the federal government is going to be submitted in the next couple of months, and then they have up to 18 months to respond. So my guess is, well, and let me tell you, because people ask me all the time, so I the same machine, or hey, hey Clark, do I, do I need to go down to emissions when I get my tag? <coughs> yes, you will. For hopefully for you know about another year and a half, and it'll be over. Uh, that's our hope. We, we are uh, people sometimes are pessimistic about it, and they say, "Oh, the impact the feds will never let happen." We believe it will. North Carolina has been successful in this, and and it's almost that that particular department is somewhat nonpartisan, and it doesn't matter what the administration is. I, I'm told that they, if you meet the requirement, and we have that they're very likely to let us out of it. So my, my guess is that sometime in the year 2021, you can stop getting your vehicle tested. Um, if you have any more questions about it, Senator Pony is a uh, happy answer. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm happy to answer any questions. I'll let Senator Pony talk. And I guess if you're okay, with I'll stay up here. Let Senator Pony talk. And if y'all have any questions, we'll, we'll be happy to answer them. Uh, and I'm happy to try and call this. Who is who is actually one of your lobbyists uh, and represent y'all? And I will tell you that you talk about the most respected individuals down at top. I've known him for years. Uh, doesn't matter what party you're with or whatever, he does a great job and he's advocating for for county's division. Uh, but if I can get my son to kind of pass things out for me. I want to talk to specifically what we did for the counties. Uh, one of the things we did was we gave the counties the authority to regulate smoking in parks. So if, if you want, if you say right now where we can smoke in buildings and such, and we send it to the parks, you can do that. We also had something that should help revenue, and that is the sales tax on internet sales. And and we've made it so it's going to come right down. So if somebody's in the city left, then they're going to get their car. Uh, in, in Tennessee, has eight states that we surround. So even if they're in a city, and that city is in two states, it's going to go to the right state. So this. this County Commission should see some increase in money coming from there. Uh, the road projects is been always traditional that the county had put 25% of the money for any, any road projects. And a couple years ago, we said we're going to try on a pilot basis to do just 2% rather than 25%. Uh, however, this year we said we're going to keep that 2%, and we made that uh, a law, so it's not going back to 25%, it's going to be 2% match for, for road. So if you all have a project, and you only have to put up 2%. Uh, we funded a little bit for some of our police and fire departments, where when they would go into a weekly school, for many years they only got $600 for that week. We made it 800 so the state picked up that additional $200. Y'all sent us three resolutions. First one, um, Jack Murphy sent And years ago, the state was in financial, distressed, and they came and they took some money away from y'all. And so there's a bill that you did, you guys sent us a resolution, and we're trying to uh, put that money back to the counties. It's stalled right now, so it didn't pass the first half of the session, but we're going to try to bring it back up again in January so we can complete that. Um, it's got a lot of support. However, it was just a funding issue at that point, so we've got to find the funding so we can get it back to the county. I will tell you, uh, but we're sponsoring that as well, we're co-sponsoring that. We believe that it was county money, it was taken from y'all, it needs to be returned so it comes back to you. So, um, Jack Murphy, appreciate you spearheading that. Another one you did was, uh, and this would have been two from education, and if we see Ms. Donna back here, uh, one of them had to do with the uh, education savings program, and y'all sent us a resolution uh, opposing it. And when we first seen the, the initial bill that came in, it was not a great bill. And I can totally understand why a lot of people would oppose that bill, especially in Wilson County, because people in Davidson County could actually move over here to be affecting us. Right, however, through a lot of, of work, a lot of negotiations, a lot going back and forth, that was taken out, and there was only two counties that it actually works with. Now, I will tell you what the governor funded education, <coughs> and in his budget, he put more money in education than we've ever had in education. But he said, you know what? I want to try and target. We've got about a million students in Tennessee. And he said, I want to try and find a way to help at least the most likely that are vulnerable. And he said, we're going to start with 5,000 students. 
and they're going to be in two districts. So he put an additional $25 million aside. And he said, I'm going to see if I can't do something with this extra $25 million. And I'm trying to keep all public, teach, all public education whole so it doesn't mm -hmm. cost them for three years. So we started a pilot program and such. And, and some people said, well, why it's fake? I will tell you that if the data shows that it's doing well, it should expand. If the data shows that it's not, it should be done away with. So, so we did pass that, but I can see why all of our set resolutions started. Uh, the second thing was alternative testing. For years, I will tell you, Tennessee has done a very poor job in testing our students. It was causing pressure on the parents, on the students, and on the teachers. And it was unacceptable. It was horrible. And you all came and said, can we do something better? And, and I was going to carry it in the Senate, and I believe that our point was carrying it in the House. Now, when we met with the department, I believe Donald had it, it, it was right came down with us, and they said there might be a question of uh, if it costs federal funds for the entire state, we wouldn't want to do this. Now, we're kind of got ball down, but I believe that this is what we want to do. We're going to try again in January. That's what you all want us to do. Another thing that's going to affect us is drive with cell phones. You cannot drive with cell phones in your hand or for texting or anything else. That's going to be as of July 1st. Uh, we did give $75,000, dollars for litter for Wilson County. Wilson County, the state ranked you all for health outcomes and health factors of the 95 counties. Wilson County came in second. I'm so proud of y'all because I represent six counties. You all are doing a great job in trying to help the health and, of, of the constituents here. Something else, and I want to thank Ms. Subinetta. We've got Commissioner Ezell coming. He's coming on Friday. Our county ranks 13 of the 95 counties in money generated in taxes and tourism. And I believe with people like Sue, with the rest of everybody that's in here, we can make that grow. So we got a commissioner coming on Friday, and, and any support we can give, uh, that's a good way for us to get more money, because then people at Huntington spend money in tourism, we don't have to build the schools. We don't have to build everything else for them. So that's that's a really good opportunity. So I want to thank um, Sue for doing that. All right, we've got actually 11 projects at TDOT that are in construction. They're, they're either preliminary training or preliminary environmental studies, um, or, they're, or they're in the right way phase of a, of a TDOT project. Uh, and I got a list of them if somebody wants to go through with them later on. But we got 13 that are underneath construction right now here in Wilson County. Of those 13, if we add up the cost, it's over $105 million that the state's investing in roads here. That doesn't count the money that's for state aid for, for private loans and such, but it's over $105 million. That's huge. All right, the last thing that I want to mention is, is this. I was on Coleman, and he said, you know, you got a resolution from the county. What does that really mean? And I told him, I said, it means a lot. You all are the voice of the people as well, and collectively you represent this entire county. What you say matters to me, matters to us. But with that, Mr. Mayor, I'm here to answer any questions of Representative Boyd. Any questions for our representatives? Uh, Commissioner Walker? Yes, sir. Thank you all. I thank both uh, Senator Kobe and Representative Boyd for your service down there for the city of Wilson County. You're doing a great job. Uh, on the revenue side, we're a fast growing county and we are kind of behind the curve sometimes because since we are second richest per capita, we are not eligible for like grant money, so we have to do with what we have just like you down there. Uh, on the revenue side, is there some legislation passed in regards to internet sales tax and is there any guidance as to what type of revenue streams that may create for us here in the near future? I can tell you on the um, state side, we're anticipating about $45 million extra on a recurring basis. I don't know what that's going to equate to on the, the county, but it is going to be a substantial amount of money coming in, at least from the, from the state side. Uh, it will be 
it, it should show up in your budget. You can see that that money, because we want to come to the residents of Wilson County, that they're the ones that buy and receive that property. We get some guys from Copro or UT. Does anybody have any information out on that? I don't know who would have the information at this point. I'm not, you know, originally, I know the state was, was trying to get that revenue, but it was recently determined, and I think that's what Senator Hogan just alluded to, is that the, the uh, county or the municipality that purchases actually after the purchase the property is going to get it. So that is great news. But I have not seen, other than the 45 feet the state, I've not seen anything yet uh, broken down to the county or city level, but I'm curious as well, so I'll check on that thing. I appreciate that. Commissioner Reed? Yeah. Thank you again for all your service. Um, I've got a question about teacher raises um, within the DEP. So I know Governor Lee spoke in the state of the state. So he factored in a 3% raise, I believe, is what it was supposed to be across the entire state per, uh, per teacher. But my understanding is because of the way DEP works, Wilton County teachers would get closer to a percent to a percent and a half based on the number of dollars that we get. And a lot of that has to do with the growth that we're seeing. So the growth money that this $3 million, which, is that what you're saying? That's the growth money that schools are getting this year from the EP? Yes, it would be an additional $3 million. And to answer your question, that's a great point. And that's one of the things that we're trying to clarify with that transparency with teacher pay bill. Wilson County is a school that, that invests a little bit more heavily in education than some of the poorer counties or more rural counties do. And so the BEP money that we get is for the number of teachers, guidance counselors, or whatever that is allocated by the state. Uh, right. And Wilson County has gone out, obviously, and, and hired more than that. And unfortunately, they're not necessarily included, so that has to be spread a little bit more thin, and that's what you're seeing there. And, and uh, hopefully this, this information that we'll be getting back a year from now, uh, based on, on the $55 million that we put in there, we can... Uh, better understand how that money is spent, and maybe in the future, if we want to make sure that teachers get a raise, that we may have to do things a little bit differently. If that's the intention of the bill, is, is transparency on this issue that you're bringing out. Thank you, Lauren. No, I, I, I'm understanding that. So, in addition, though, from the, the one and a half percent, the, the BEP increase also pays for additional teachers that have to be hired because of the growth that we're seeing. Is that right? That's my understanding. So, I guess what I'm asking you is, is this three million really going to make a big dent based on what we've been promised by the state to be able to cover teacher raises as well as be able to cover additional teacher salaries because as you know we are the uh, fastest growing county in the state of Tennessee right now. Well whether it'll be enough money or not I'm not sure we'll ask the school board that I can tell you you're getting an additional three million and then we did put that in state lot fifty five million. I can only give you that data. I'm not sure if that was a rhetorical question or I actually wanted to answer that, but uh, I'm not sure I can answer that specifically. I did. I just wanted to make sure that you were clear as to what we have to deal with at the local level. And that three million, well, nice, <coughs> doesn't necessarily give us enough money from the state to be able to give the three percent raises that Governor Lee said that were going to occur. And, and you bring up another good point sure. there. I think that there's going to be some uh, some uh, there's a task force to put together this year. Part of that is to deal with testing. And just to let you know that the TA grade the statewide testing did go off with no problems this year. So I was excited about that. We are going to have a new vendor moving forward. But the how the BEP is allocated is something else that I think is going to be looked into. And Lauren, it's it's never enough money. We we know that. I mean, if, if there was an easy button we could press to get you a lot more, we would definitely do that. Uh, but, but to answer your question, we know it's never enough money, but, but we, you know, we're proud to see any come this way that we can. Thank you. Do you have a question? Question? If not, thank you both for being here tonight and sharing information. <laughs>
Seeing that all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Emergency Manager Director's Report, Director Cooper. Thank you, Mayor, County Commission. Uh, our call volume this month is pretty much identical uh, compared to last month. I think we were over one, uh, one call uh, this month compared to last. Uh, our activity report has been very busy uh, this time of year. Uh, in addition to that, uh, on May 28th, we did receive uh, our ISO rating. Uh, we did maintain a 4-4-X, uh, as we did in 2014, uh, with a maintained effective date of September 1st, 2019. Uh, if you'd like to see the full report, uh, I have that at the office uh, to discuss any other things. We, we made that by 1.01 point, 1 point, points, so you're right there on that line. So that, that's the issue we're having to face uh, with that. But, uh, other than that, that concludes my report. Move to release by. Sorry, Any discussion? Where's your back? I have uh, questions. I've got a couple of phone calls. On resolution 19-65 pertaining to the $12,000 uh, debt for fuel, moving from fuel to the uh, uniform. Could you elaborate on that for us? Yes, ma'am. Uh, probably, I think it was last year, uh, best I can recollect, uh, we did move monies out of fuel into the uniform line for Class A uniforms for our fire officers and our armor guards. <clears throat> now, with that, that money amount originally I pulled out of the air before we actually uh, went through that process. So, when I went through that process, our fire officers, they pretty much have the lowest level of Class A uniforms. And the honor guard before had the same type. So what we've done is we elected to go to the mid grade for the honor guard and to be in unity with the rest of the county. It's a military style honor guard uniform. So in going to that uniform with all the hardware that comes with it, I had to supplement the money that was applied to that the first time. We haven't even received the uniforms yet. So that's what that's for. It's to supplement what was done the year prior, which hasn't been completed yet. So any other questions? Uh, yes. So it's not an attempt is to just last money before the emergency. No, ma'am. I even made that mention in the EMA committee, if you remember, that we did throw funds over in there last year. And this is just to supplement what we had done based on the amount with the uniform that we went I, for one, want to represent my department and my county the best that I can, just like the other departments. So that's why I've done the budget committee. Mr. Ginger. So, how much did we have in it last year that you're supplementing? Uh, I want to say 20, if I'm not mistaken. Now, is this, I normal, had it. is this normal procedures for the fire departments around the state to do this? Yes. Do you have the class A uniforms? Well, what standard is, is the whole department. But we did talk about it last year and we didn't, they did not want to do the whole department, so we just stuck with the officers and the honor guard. Now, when you say class A uniform, what does that mean? I mean, I was in the military, I know what it meant for me. Same thing. Same thing? Same type of thing? Same thing. Okay, thanks. Now, I read the minutes for the EMA meeting, and it's saying in there, ship leaders and everything awesome in the class A uniform. Yes. Why? I don't have a really problem with the honor guard. I think the honor guard needs to look good for Zed Kim, but I really, really don't know ship leaders and everybody needs a class A unit. Well, we talked about it last year, and most people that will attend either uh, at events or funerals, what have you, will be officers, mainly. 
So that's why labor ain't put in. Mr. Dapp, this is also for uh, funerals and things of that nature also. We have we have the same setup that he's talking about now at the park. Yeah. Any other questions? All of your sorry. Oh, that's all I was going to ask. Yeah, quick. Yeah, all of our officers do, along with every other department, you know, fire department in our reach. Yeah. Any other questions? Are you there? All in favor, say aye. 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 Folks, thank you, Director. Report from law enforcement committee, Mr. Rich. No report. There's report. She calls. Good evening, Sheriff Brian could be this evening at the uh, National Sheriff's Association Conference. Uh, did everybody receive a Sheriff's Monthly Report? I'd like to uh, draw your attention to the first page of the activity report, which is in the title, uh, The Domestic Violence Offenses Investigated. I think we have 819, that should be 89. <laughs> <laughs> it was online, it was 819. Uh, any questions about the uh, monthly report? That's my motion to approve the report. Yeah. Any discussion? Quick. 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 Is both through the jail for it? I guess six was 656, yes. Wow. Did you check? Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, sir. Report the Education Committee. First, the Chicago Commission of the Education Committee met on Thursday, June 6, 5 30 p.m. upstairs conference room. If there are no questions or comments, I move these uh, minutes be received at 5. Okay. Motion and second. Any discussion? Seeing that all in favor say aye. 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 Director, please report. All right. I'd like to add why Dr. Wright is coming. It's such a pleasure to see Senator Pauly give her such high remarks. For being one of the top director of schools in the state of Tennessee. Thank you, Commissioner Stafford, and all based on what's happening in Wilson County. So, but thank you. Um, you have a very brief report in uh, your package for tonight. Uh, one to just add some additional information. Uh, you have uh, uh, that came out of the graduation ceremonies class of 2019. We uh, graduated today the largest class ever, 17. 125 students um, received diplomas, and um, with that information, you also have, um, and there's still uh, offers coming in, but offered uh, uh, nearly $50 million and uh, awarded, and that what we mean awarded is what was accepted, um, nearly uh, a little over $35.5 uh, million dollars that came in, and so you have a record of that. Uh, you also have in your packet as far as, and uh, you know, not knowing that uh, Senator Cody and uh, Representative Boyd would be here tonight, the resolution opposing the educational vouchers legislation um, that uh, our board approved at the last meeting, and simply because of uh, what we see as um, how that is um, using uh, all the dollars uh, that will be offsetting and for right now two counties, but we also know from history. That, that was the same route that the charter legislation that did the same thing. It started with two bar, the larger districts, <coughs> eventually was expanded to, uh, to the five large districts, and now charter uh, schools are available across uh, the state. So, again, um, we very detailed language as far as our opposition to that. I um, want to invite um, uh, the commission to two potential meetings as far as going over budget and talking about what it's looking uh, like as we move into this fiscal year. June 25th at 5.30 and uh, opportunity June 26th at 8 a.m. We'll send out an invitation and again as a reminder just to come in and let's go over uh, what we are looking potentially in this next coming year. And, and something in my picture brings, uh, thank you for your comments. Uh, you were indeed correct as far as what happens when um, there is a um, raise that's presented by any governor. It's not something that you need to uh, governor leave. There's always the information as far as potential for a teacher raise. 
And the BEP formula, which is one that no one ever wants to go into an explanation or a calculation because no one understands it. But it's, it is what it is, and it's distributed, uh, particularly when you look at uh, 95 um, counties which are looking at potential up to 146 school districts. And we are one of uh, the many large districts that we are penalized for our ability to pay. We get about 65% of our funds from the state, 35% uh, approximately locally, and then 1% to 2% uh, from the federal government. And the thing is that when, uh, what it was noted, I believe, uh, Commissioner Walker, my one like uh, your notation as far as the second wealthiest county uh, in the state. That ability to pay is a penalty, and we're penalized. The thing is also with the BP, you need to note, as far as it's a very specific, as far as what it does fund, we go over about 200 additional employees than needed than what the BP pays for. That's where our AP and honors classes, many of our electives when you look at our fine arts. Uh, you're looking at nurses, if the ratio for uh, nurses per school is one to 3,000 which would give us about six and a half nurses for uh, 23 campuses if we follow that ratio, but we have a nurse in every school. So the difference as far as what you make, it basic means basic, and that's what it, what it uh, uh, contains. And so again, you know, when we look at that uh, message that comes together, the intention, and, and really that transparency piece is going to be excellent. Now, looking back at Senator Cody right now, because it's misunderstood how the funding goes out. We, we have to use ours for growth. Just to open Glacial Middle School next year, it's going to be $2.1 million. And the other thing that you know we have to sort of remind people when you look at an operating budget for any school district, 80% uh, of its salaries. And so, uh, again, Commissioner Bruce brought up the fact that we are the fastest growing county. You saw the May 24th issue of the Tennessee, and it was very clearly stated that we had surpassed. Williamson and Rutherford and Davis, and so it's there. And so you see all those pieces and just the magnitude of what we're working with. But we are grateful for every dime because that's what it takes to maintain and to exceed the expectations for this school district because our students benefit from that as well as um, our teachers who are doing a magnificent job. Um, and, and that's something I cannot. Um, really say enough about what our teachers are doing. And this is probably the hardest time in education I've seen in 38 years because the expectations are so high and our teachers are delivering and our administrators are maintaining what I call small cities, communities of learning as far as for our boys and girls and they're doing a great job as well. And that's why we're seeing the outcome that we're seeing. So again, um, it's not to dispute or think that message comes out from governors. And it always makes sense as far as raises for teachers. There are two counties in the state right now that cannot meet the minimum salary schedule. They do get raises for their teachers because that's the only way they, they can maintain and keep their educational system going. Uh, one particularly is one of the poorest counties in the country is in Hancock County in East Tennessee. And so we are thankful for that as well. But they're also struggling to get qualified, certified teachers for high school subjects. So you can imagine their dilemma and trying to even get minimum salary schedules. So with that, um, that concludes more than what my report had, but just want to give you an update on that. And again, you have an invitation uh, June 25th at 530 or June 26th at 8 a.m., your choice, to please join us and let us walk through what we're seeing uh, in the next uh, budget. And you also have an invitation July 14th at 2 p.m. Um, for the ribbon cutting for the new label Middle School. Will the report be received in file? Yeah. That discussion we got. Uh, Commissioner Breach? Yeah, I was wondering if I could ask a follow up question. I hope I have an answer. I'm oh, sorry, no, no, I, I didn't just sort of, these are off the top for me too. So, um, how many teachers are having to, to hire in addition because of growth this year? Because of growth? Oh, goodness. I know that we just did the, what I call the sort of the round robin with balancing with the two middle schools to stack. Label middle, and so there was 37 that moved between two existing middle schools, and we had a hired 13 additional new teachers. But uh, as far as growth, I don't have that number from me. Even if you just give me a ballpark, I mean, do you think you're adding? Um, I'm thinking 15. Oh, wait a minute, I'm getting hand signals back there. Okay. Seven <laughs> new teachers, as far as, and then what? 22. 22? Okay. okay. Okay, and my other question, and you may or may not be able to answer the whole time. I'm hearing 
and this is bright line hearing, that there's principals that are having problems trying to hire qualified teachers, um, specifically for uh, high school languages, as well as some of these um, the harder sciences. Is, is that the case? Are you having that issue? And if so, do you have an idea why? Oh, I can tell you why. That's just fine. We, right now, and when you look at what's happening in Middle Tennessee right now, our municipal districts are competing for a limited number that are coming out to teach preparation programs. Uh, for example, MTSU, traditionally in years past, if you looked at three and 400 graduates out to teach programs, they graduate 148. Um, you're looking at 50 out of Cumberland. You're looking at Lipscomb. But we're all competing as we replenish, not only for growth, but when you look at national attrition as you know, teachers either retire or move into other areas. Um, we sit very comfortably right now at a 93.3% retention rate, which is pretty phenomenal, and those are state figures that as far as they can get. But the thing is that as we start looking at, at people retiring without particularly opportunities in math and science, uh, world languages, which is the new thing for foreign language, special education. We're all competing for that same number of teachers. And so if you're talking about a commodity, which all high teachers becomes a commodity that's a sort of a, the only economic supply and demand. And we are really seeing uh race as far as that we are not only competing, but it's, it's almost like a bidding war. And uh, we are in a good place right now, but my prediction, because I also teach graduate courses in uh, education, that we're going to see a loss coming into the profession, which again uh, further creates a situation that pipeline that in three to five years, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do to replenish um, the educator pipeline, particularly when you look at the qualifications that are also from the state. Um, we, we do not accept licensure certificates from other states. Uh, and uh, so we're working on that right now, and that's something that we've also, again, uh, Senator Cody, Representative Boyd are helping with us. We are one of three states that do not have a strong reciprocity with other states, teaching and nursing, and uh, a highly qualified coming out of Jefferson County, Kentucky, in mathematics, had to take a praxis test or go in, to a university for a program of studies because we wouldn't accept their license. Yeah, it's, it's tough right now. That's a long answer, but that's what we're doing. It is, but thank you very much for all the information. Commissioner Ash? Dr. Rogers, please pass on to the nutrition program. I bet y'all appreciate them keeping these uh, prices in line, especially for children who don't have the funds to do that. I mean, for a family like that, I know how much that means, so pass it on. Thank you very much. I will. I'll start Commissioner Ginger? Uh, you mentioned that we have, I think you said 700. 25 graduates? Yeah. yeah. Graduating, you might have more by August 15th, which is the last deadline coming out of the adult high school. Mm -hmm. okay. So, do, you, do we have a projected new students' inputs? I mean, you're coming out of this side, how much do we have input? Well, we know that we have a large uh, kindergarten class to A5 now. Uh, so that, that's the foundation piece that will be moving through, and we'll still be enrolling up until September. Okay, so we don't really. Have a number yet for the new students. Oh, yeah. Uh, not anything that we could be formally as far as until we start looking into our numbers. Um. Okay. All right, thank you. Commissioner McCall? Uh, yes, Dr. Wright, there was a pretty good information I requested by a week ago. We'll let you know. Which one? Because we've had several. Well, there's one that one of the commissioners here. Uh, I spoke to Justin, uh, Commissioner Smith this morning. Okay. Uh, this morning. I'm sorry. Been a long day this evening, and uh, it ends but uh, explain as far as the seven day. Uh, and that Rebecca Owens, who's out of HR, is not only working on that, but where he's at the top of the hopper now. As far as uh, we've also had a request from uh, Commissioner Breeze, and then received another one that came through a board member uh, from uh, Terry Nichols. So we have three right now, but asking for the same information. Yes, yes, Monday. Is that what Ms. Owens will this morning? Any other questions, Dr. Rock? Mayor, I might add something in too, just the volume of information too, particularly um, as I was explaining to Commissioner Smith, we're talking about over 3,000 employees plus making sure that we catalog it by department, but it will be complete. All in favor say aye. Aye. Vote. Dr. Rock. 
Fourth Department Work Committee and glad to have uh, Commissioner Keith with us tonight. Fourth Department Work Committee held Thursday, May 23rd, concerns the Constitution of Ministry of the Fact. This one has a question from the group. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, Action and Management Committee, uh, Commissioner Cross. I did see this thing. I know this in, in the attachments in there. These were approved as the Wayne Center Committee, but I noticed there's some mistakes in the attachments, and I make a motion that we return these attachments to the committee for them to be, be reviewed again. I'll second. Motion to second to return these minutes and not approve them. I'm assuming not, so uh, all in favor of that say aye. Uh, uh, vote. If the record reflects, we will not approve the minutes of the Ag Management Committee tonight and send those back to revision. Animal Control, Commissioner Marlowe. Animal Control met Thursday, June 6th, here at the Comfort Room. I'm going to your packet and move that you receive and file. Any discussion? Now, all in favor say aye. Uh, uh, all right, Commissioner Menard, no report. Hail the tax, Commissioner Walker, no report. Development Tourism, Commissioner Menard. Yes, the Development Tourism met on Tuesday, May the 21st, and again on um, Tuesday, June 11th. I need to look at these reports to be received and filed. Okay. Any discussion? Seeing yeah. none? Someone says so. All in favor say aye. Uh, Ethics, Commissioner Mack. No report. Finance, Commissioner Gentry. The Finance Committee met on May 23rd at 5 30. And the minutes on your package make a motion to receive the call. Got a motion to second, not discussion. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Health and Welfare, Health and Recreation. Commissioner Pat? Uh, health, and, health and Welfare Recreation Committee met May 13th at 5 p.m. and 14th at 5 p.m. and May 16th. At 6 p.m., all nights until about 9 o'clock, almost 9 o'clock. Uh, the next one is your packet. Um, most of the day we received your file. Thank you. Also, it up to something. I got a motion to second. Now, discussion. Mm -hmm. I'd like to thank the members of the committee for their, for their dedication and their hard work with those three boxes. Oh, quite long series. Thank you for that service. Thank you, Mr. Gentry. They noticed in the uh, minutes of health and welfare, and also in the uh, Tourism, as some duplications were there as far as money going to different organizations. And was there a way to clarify that? So, well, is there three, I believe there are three items of tourism. It's more than that. More than that. But they're duplicated, and I just want to make sure they're not getting duplicate money. And I don't know uh, how we can address that. Uh, the to do, the, the thing to do is to go to the community and address it and then uh, take them back out there. Well, I would have them call the community meeting. Go back there, Commissioner that. Uh, Mayor Hutto, I think it's probably just a typo because okay. local tourism, at least here from all the chambers and sort of out and sort of water down, and they are also in the minutes for health and welfare. So I think it's maybe just a typo that was just copied over. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We both in both committees. Okay. So might we pull both of these and bring them back? Are you saying that it didn't happen? No, I'm saying in development tourism like the chambers are listed that they yes. receive money and in health and welfare they're also listed that they receive money and have the both committees that yes. Then the committees will have to make fix that. That's not a bit okay. Development tourism is correct. So you come before us in recreation to meet to me. They didn't come forward. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're saying that in the uh, health and welfare, it's listed that the uh, yes. change of money, but they did not come forward. Yes, there are several in there. Whoever made the list had to buy their list, the water list, on somebody. Okay. It's in our list, but it's combined with the other list. Yes. We will, if you will, uh, just to see me. Sometimes we'll highlight these and go back and uh, see what we've done. Yeah, that list was provided to me, and I worked it into the middle, so uh, I don't throw anybody under the bus. But I mean, 
It's the first nine in the Swiss. It starts with the Magnolia Symphony Chamber to the Tennessee Artists Guild. And if you'll look in Health and Welfare, one through nine is the same thing. Okay. Okay. But they're both of them act on I'm sorry. That's just it. We need a minute. Well, well, we don't have a minute right now. Can we turn back next month? Yeah, uh, that's one thing I know. We'll find our problem out and come back and correct it. You know what you acted on, we'll go back and verify that and bring them both back next month. Okay? Is that good with you? It's fine for me. So first, I'm on my second there in that, on that list. I will draw my second. I will draw my second and then go back. Thank you, Marshall. Yes. You've already approved your development. Yes, sir. And they were in there. Yes, sir. Ours are fine. Okay. So we got them in there. Yes. And we know what shouldn't be unhelpful. Right. Okay. So we, we could probably make a motion to amend the health and welfare to take out those that were already in the development. I'll make that motion. I'll say that. We got a motion second to take out one through nine. One through nine, nine starting with living was in town chamber and meeting with Tennessee Artist Guild. Second. You seen that second this time? Yeah. <laughs> yes. She says it should be really sure. right. <laughs> one through nine that will be these might yeah, will be will be. Okay, motion second to accept the amendment. All in favor say aye. Aye. Folks, now we're back to approve uh, these minutes as amended. Got a motion? So moved. Okay. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Folks, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not sure to be honest with you. I see the drip. How many committees say that? <laughs> What y'all was on in the county commission. And now, uh, every committee here approved it, doesn't matter. Y'all got approved the county commission. That's right. All right. We'll move forward. Insurance Commissioner Hatch. No report. Judicial Commissioner Key. This will be in the QC May 21st here in the upstairs room. I'm going to change the packet. This is the last question of the approved. Thank you. Any discussion? See you now in favor of South. Folks, my name is Donnie, Commissioner McFarland. Rules of Mr. Ginger. A report. Herman Cox, so he worked with Mr. Strzok. Any discussion? I'm in favor of say aye. Folks, finance director's report uh, is uh, in your packet, I believe. Uh, and, uh, Mr. Uh, Maynard, the uh, wife had a death of the family, and so he had to leave. So he's not here tonight for us, and I will ask a motion to approve that report. Second. Any discussion? See none all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Report from the Budget Committee. Mr. King. Budget Committee, the first of June 6th, here in the next round of the week, and then the next. This is the last question for the report. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? See none all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? As uh, Commissioner Glover comes forward to do the resolution for us, we're glad to have Mr. Tommy Jones. Mr. Tommy Jones with us tonight as well. Thank you, Mr. As we get to the zoning uh, resolutions, uh, we'll ask you to have a motion to uh, go into uh, out of session so we have a public hearing before we actually go to those resolutions. We'll take care of the first ones now. Mr. Glover. Also, I'd say I'm Glad I'm Gary Keith's granddaughter's here. That Bob, she, she always attention volunteer or something. Or if they're kind of commissioning. So, in 1986, that's Jay. Resolution of the Board of County Commissioners, Wilson County, Tennessee, is approved and set up by the Wilson County Road Commissioner, Kenneth Orridge. So, I'm going to a motion second. Are you ready to vote? Please cast your vote. All hearts and minds are good with your vote. Mm -hmm. Leave the court. Mm -hmm. 
Four yes, one yes. Resolution passes. 19-6-3, resolution of the Board of County Commissioners of Wilson County to report revenues received but not included in the original budget for the 2018-19 fiscal year and to amend the budget and the preparation resolutions for the 2018-19 fiscal year to make an additional appropriation in the capital projects fund. Motion to approve. Okay. Got a motion to second. Now any discussion? Seeing none, are you ready to vote? Please cast your vote. Uh, all hearts and minds given to you vote. Please record. Four yes, one yes, one yes, resolution passes. Resolution 19-6-4, resolution of the Board of County Commissioners of Wilson County, Tennessee to amend the budget and appropriation resolution for the 2018-19 fiscal year and to make line items transfer from the Wilson Emergency Management Agency. Question to agree. Thank you. You discuss it. Do you not know you're ready to vote? Please cast your vote. Commissioner Dow, Commissioner Atkins. All hearts and minds good when you vote. Please record. Four yes, one yes, resolution passed. Resolution 19-6-5, Resolution of the Board of County Commissioners of Wilson County, Tennessee to amend the budget and appropriation resolution for the 2018-2019 fiscal year to make a line out of transfer in the Wilson Emergency Management Agency motion to approve. Thank you. Any discussion? Commissioner Rick? Uh, yes. Uh, Commissioner Dow? Commissioner Atkins? 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 You know, finding ways to scan. Now, the record Cooper stated that uh, when he did his report and was asked about it, that this was approved part of it last year, but he underestimated the amount that it was going to cost. But we underestimated by twelve thousand uh, dollars. I just, I, I just don't think. I, and it's nothing against them. Uh, I think y'all have class A's for the honor guard and everything. But I just don't think we need to find ways to, you know, search for ways to spend it in your life. Any other comment before we go? Mr. McCart? Yes, sir. I, I was in that agency for a while, and I think uh, what there is needed is kind of like this, uh, Mr. Cooper, when I think we're ready to be a great place, we're ready to come in a great uniform to the Commission of Reef Bank because we did vote for I just want to say that everyone votes for it just for the fact that we need to represent to the best of our ability in Wilson County. We need to be dressed uh, like the Lebanon like Fire, Lebanon like Police, the Sheriff's Department, and, and hopefully, hopefully one day we'll be able to forward to outfit the entire uh, personnel of WEMA. Uh, the, I believe this is very needed, and I don't think it's just time to make it the budget here. Uh, I don't think it's something that we underestimated because prices go up. Like you said, he ordered last year, they're still not here. Uh, I hope that you're able to approve this. Any other discussion before we go? All right, all in favor, I'm sorry, don't do that. Uh, <laughs> are you ready to vote? Do <laughs> cast your vote? All hearts and minds be with you vote. Please record. Yes, two no's. One out. Resolution passed. Resolution 196-6. Resolution of the Board of County Commissioners of Wilson County, Tennessee to reflect revenues received but not included in the original budget for the 2018-2019 fiscal year. And to amend the budget and appropriation resolution for 2019-19 fiscal year to make an appropriation from the Wayman Reserve Fund and to the Wilson Emergency Management Agency. Question for you today. Motion to second. Now, any discussion? Yes, sir. Mr. Stafford? Yes, sir. I thought any time that, I thought at one time, I guess I've been a commissioner here for, for a few days, I thought anything under $2,000, $5,000 was going to put in the consent agenda. I noticed here lately we've got a lot of things that's coming out, $1,500. That's if it's a line out of transfer. This is an appropriation. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure. My bad. Any other discussion? 
Say an aye, you're ready to vote. Please cast your vote. All right, so mine's good with your vote. Way to court. One four yes, one half. The resolution passed. Resolution 196-7. Resolution of the Board of County Commissioners of Wilson County, Tennessee, to reflect seven years received but not included in the original budget for the 2018-19 fiscal year, and to amend the budget and appropriation resolution for the 2018-19 fiscal year to make an additional appropriation from the fire truck reserve to make a line item, line item transfer to the winner. Mr. Perkins. Thank you. Excuse me, Scott. Seeing are you ready to vote? Please cast your vote. Now we're ready. <clears throat> How do you want me to vote? Yes. You sure? All hearts and minds good with your vote. Go ahead and record. Oh, yes, one out. Resolution 19.6-8. Resolution of the Board of County Commissioners of Wilson County, Tennessee, to reflect revenues received but not included in the original budget for the 2018-19 fiscal year. And to amend the budget and appropriation resolution for the 2019-19 fiscal year to transfer these slides to the Hamlet's Fund. I got a motion to second. Now, how do you discuss? Seeing none, are you ready to vote? Please cast your vote. Yes, ma'am. I have to stop. I didn't have to I have a few minutes. Can we have to Yes. All hearts and minds good with your vote. Go ahead and record. Four yes. And that's the resolution passed. Resolution 19-6-9. Resolution of the Board of County Commissioners of Wilson County, Tennessee, to amend the budget and appropriation resolution for the 2019-19 fiscal year to make the line of transfers to the property assessor. Motion approved. Thank you. Motion and second. Now it's Seeing none, are you ready to vote? Please cast your vote. All hearts and minds good with your vote. Please record. Before you ask what happened, the resolution passes. At this time, we would like to have a motion to go out second. So moved. Second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And Tom um, here, you can come forward. Mike. Will they read all of these resolutions and then that take you my speech on the next one at a time? Well, I would propose, because I have six of them tonight, is to run the, the public hearing announcement once and then just list the particular resolution and allow for a um, three person. I, I think you're fine with that, but two of these don't require a public hearing where you set fees. That's correct. Where you're amending the zoning order. That's what requires. That's correct. And where are the public advertisers? They work. So we'll say all of them, and then let anybody speak from any of them, and then go back and say it and call it me for them. Ladies and gentlemen, our public hearing will be held before the West County Commission on Monday, June 17th. 2019 at 7 p.m. in the County Commissioner Room here at the Wilson County Courthouse, located at 228 East Main Street in Lebanon, Tennessee, to hear uh, several items for consideration, uh, four of which are amendments to the zoning ordinance, and two of which are fee schedule uh, change proposals. A copy of each of these requests has been on file at the Wilson County Planning Office at 228 East Main Street and has been available for inspection during regular business hours. Anyone desiring to comment or request to come forward at this time. Uh, the first one that we will entertain public hearing comments for is the amendments establishing a clarifying definition and associated regulatory language for the term unserviceable vehicles. Thank you. All right. Okay. 
The next one is amendment clarify the definition of travel trailer to clearly include recreational vehicles, RVs, uh, motor homes, and campers. Uh, and as an amendment, and just adding additional language uh, pertaining to those. Uh, an amendment updating the specific aspects of the side provisions, and an amendment uh, establishing engineer elevated pad uh, requirements in flood prone areas and potentially eliminating hydrostatic venting requirements. Uh, also for consideration are uh, two items that deal with fee schedules in the county building inspector's office. Uh, one of which is uh, amending the zoning for zoning fields fee, and the other is amending the uh, fee for accessory uh, structure building permits. Anyone here in the audience wish to speak on any of these ones, please step forward, state your name, address for the record. See, and I'm going to close public comment period, but I'm going to stay out of session. I've got one 19-6-16 that was added late to the package we need to deal with while we're out of session. So I'm assuming we can pull that one down. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go back and read 19-6-16. It's all in the yeah. It's a resolution of any Wilson County zoning ordinance clarifying the current definition of travel trailer to clearly include recreational vehicles, motor homes, and campers while adding additional language in relation to such elsewhere within the zoning ordinance. And the additional language has to do with uh, what zone districts that would be regulated within. Now, that was added great to your package, and so I guess I will get a motion to approve that now. Motion. And a second. Second. Now, discussion about this ordinance. Anybody? Commissioner Kurtz. Is that, if, if you're building a house, can you live in your travel trailer? We will permit you to live in a travel trailer during the life of a valid building permit. But uh, if I just pull a travel trailer out of my lot and put a swimming pool behind it and deck on it, I can't do that. We, we do not permit that unless you turn it into a permanent residence with permanent utility connections and a permanent improvement or foundation wall. That's current regulation. We're just trying to clarify that. We will allow people to store a mobile home on their property, but they can't have anybody living in it generally for more than two weeks at a time, and, and, and that's hard to enforce. So I'm very sure that. Is that in here two weeks? Do you have um, Do you have any that you're looking at right now that have a building permit that are living in a travel trailer right now? Oh, absolutely. We have people that are building houses all over the county that are staying in a mobile home or camper while they're building their house. We have be a lot. We had a guy set up out in our neighborhood that had three of them and he was renting them out. That's, that's, that's what we're trying to address is be more clear with our definitions of what's included and then be more clear about how we regulate them. And, that, and I know I'm being silly, but if, if I move it on there and I hook back up to it and I leave for three days and I come back, is there a break in time? I mean, how do you enforce that? Again, that's a, that's all one of those things that are hard to enforce. But yes, we we would try to keep that. Because there's a guy. I mean, there's one of my neighbors is doing it on current. Absolutely. So, okay. Mr. Uh, and what's the life of the building permit? Uh, I believe it's 24 months. 24 months. So it takes. Oh, 24 months. Okay. So yeah. if they use it, um, so they don't start their building until the 23rd month. How long do they have? They, well, they're supposed to be start to finish in 24 months, and if they, if they can't accomplish that in that 24 month period, they're required to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals for a deal to extend the life of the permit or repay an permit fee, which is typically 76 a square foot for some kind of record. Oh, there doesn't need to be some kind of language or amendment that says that uh, said structure should be started within a the building permit language already kind of addresses that. That's not part of this amendment, but we have, we addressed that uh, several months prior now, uh, whereby we, we amended it to allow up to a 24 month lifespan for any building permit. But you're supposed to generally show uh, progress by, as evidenced by calling for additional inspections and in the suite of inspections required for residences within a 12 month period of time. Mr. Cobb? So, Tom, if I understand this correct, uh, like in my district, I spoke to you briefly about this 
think we've got a guy running a homeless shelter out of the RV beside his house in a residential area. And that is his desire to stop that type well, of thing. Well, in, in broad terms, yes. When you're dealing with a religious outreach, you've got some other protections that they're afforded that are hard to get away. Yes. Uh, but in broad terms, yes. It's still not been proven to me that this guy's a preacher or wherever. That's something I'll talk to you about a little bit later. But that's basically what this is to stop. Mm -hmm. right? okay. I'm on the other thing. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. First of all, along the same lines, how does this pertain to tiny houses? I know there's a lot of TV. To me, it's uh, another trailer on wheels there. Well, and tiny houses are meant to support homeless people to try to get them off the street. Now, again, if, if you're doing it as, a, as a, an outreach of a church, you're protected by the Religious and Institutionalized Persons Act, which is federal law, and I believe in something called the Tennessee Religious Freedom Act, which is a protection that goes even further than the state of Tennessee about it. Uh, so uh, if you're doing that under the auspices of church outreach, we really kind of fight with one hand out behind our back if it's something that, that everybody's up in arms about. Any other questions on 19-6, past 16? Seeing none, are you ready to vote? I think that is all in favor say aye. 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 Vote. The record reflects the unanimous. Now we have a motion to go back in the session. No move. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Vote. 19-6, past 16. None. Nineteen dash six dash ten uh, has to do with uh, establishing a fee structure for accessory building permits. Uh, there was some discussion at this committee, but what we ultimately landed on was, uh, I believe, ten cents per square foot. Right now, we, we currently charge fifty dollars for anything uh, less than a thousand square feet and seventy-five dollars for anything above a thousand square feet. What we're running into is people. And before I say this, let me state that agricultural farmers are exempted from permit fees in general. They just have to get a permit in our, by our practices. Uh, so this wouldn't necessarily affect the farm. But what we're running into is people are building bigger and bigger accessory structures, which are your shed, your storage barns, and they're good for personal storage or personal use. Some of the, some of which are. Uh, <coughs> We're having to kind of look after them to make sure they're not trying to operate a commercial operation or residential area or anything else. Taking a lot of staff time, a lot, a lot of salary uh, and wage hour time. So what this was designed to do was get us more revenue in return for the amount of inspection that we're having to throw at some of these larger buildings. So we're going away from the flat fee of fifteen seventy-five dollars and look at ten cents per square foot. Now there's an example in there that shows. Uh, what that would be basically for a 500 square foot accessory structure, which is kind of more your traditional shed, that's going to be around 500 or 50 bucks, uh, which is kind of in line with what we charge now. For a thousand square foot, uh, which is maybe a large barn, two, 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 maybe a two bay garage or whatever, that's going to be about 100 bucks. Uh, 1500 square foot would be 150, 2000 would be 200, 3000 square foot would be 300, and so on. And this is for accessory structure. On your predominantly in residential zone. Have a motion to approve? Move to approve. Okay. Any discussion? Mr. Jones? Yes. Um, nobody I've talked to, they're tired of being nuclear combined staff by the county from this thing or that thing. Uh, I think we just need more people along. They're not doing this. People just get tired of all this. Okay. I understand your concern. Uh, I have a real problem uh, going this for this one is about porches and decks and patios and sprinkles go on and you probably put a deck on my house. I don't have to get to the hundred dollar permit to sell off the deck on my house. <laughs> And I went uh, Mr. Jones, I think that we set so many fees for our revenue 
you know, everything we did was paying for this, paying for that, and it was the property taxes and everything else. And I just, I just follow the vote. Any other comments before we vote? Yes, sir. In the defense of, of being on the uh, committee, we've got to do something, as we've all stated several times before, we do have a growing county. And with our growing county, it is getting deeper and deeper into our taxpayers' pockets. But however, we've got to find some kind of way to offset some of these fees and to kind of help Mr. Bashir's cover some of his costs. So I think that was our main reason for doing what we did to try to help him in a sense. Uh, really, he needs probably another employee or two. That's another, another day and another story. Uh, get what he need done. So that was really our reason. There are things that's going on in this county. I think uh, several of you may have had things that have had, had an opportunity to be looked at because he don't have enough employees to cover the whole county, and especially with the growth. So we call ourselves trying to help him. We don't want to nickel and dime anybody to death, but our county is on a rapid growth. Bruce. If we don't pass this with the fees, what would be the alternatives? What other revenue would we use to be able to, to fund your department? General fund. So yeah, yeah, like, that's not a threat. I right. thought just saying that's that's how you fund it now. Well, that's what I was asking. Yes. So, so basically what we're, what we're deciding here is do we want to fund your department using fees based on the people who use the different uh, permits mm -hmm. or do we want to fund the department using general funds or you know, property tax dollars? So that's what we're really talking about here. All right. That's correct. Okay. I just wanted. And there, there are there are different ways that different counties do it. Many of them use a, a, a schedule that's proposed by the International Building Code. That's that's rather hard to explain here on the spot. But if you look at what they're charging, they're they're generally charging in the range of two hundred anywhere from one hundred fifty to two hundred thirty dollars. By the time you add in uh, uh, inspection fees, they charge for each inspection through the process of building codes. Uh, at these different jurisdictions. The only one that has anything similar to what we are doing now is the city of Lebanon. They still charge us less. Mr. Costa? I agree with Commissioner Stafford. I'm going to have a look at this. And I also agree with Commissioner Pack and Commissioner Jim. If we're, uh, the county is growing, when are we going to start charging people that are making the county grow? That's my problem. Why are we, we're taxing the residents that have been here forever? And I'm thinking it's Utah, but it's time to start charging people that are coming in here and, and creating the growth. This may not be the time to say that, so let's get started. Thank you. Um, I, I, um, yes, and that is exactly what I was going to say. There's, there's just too much growth. And you know, the local residents, the people have been here forever, they're tired of them. You know, having to pay additional fees and everything along with new people coming in. But the new people are the ones that are coming in causing the problem tax fees. I mean, but the rest, the true residents of Wilson County have been taxed for them. So the fees and and and, and, and Tom, that means it's too weird to talk at all. But if you need more people, then that's definitely a budget problem. And you know, and yes, that's, that's what that means. Yeah, people see other requests in my needs section. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> however, however, I hope you understand where I'm coming from, too. I'm, I'm tasked with trying to run these agencies, and while government is not a business, I am trying to shore up my revenue line. So, uh, so. Thank you, Matt. Just, just for a point of clarification, agriculture is a Farmers are exempt as long as they are operating it as an agricultural use. Right. Yeah. Richard Thompson? I just want to, this has been the last thing I said. <laughs> what about the problem? <laughs> but, and I keep hearing this from people in our district, uh, raise that facility, so then I keep hearing from other people, well, let's stop people from moving in here. Well, hallelujah. I'm tired of people moving in here. We're in big town. If that stops them, it stops them. If it does, then we got it from them. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you. Are you <laughs> so these permit fees that we're talking about, though, they're actually for people who are building, right? That's correct. Which means that it's growth, right? Yes, it's more like so a user fee. Right. So we're basically <laughs> trying to. They're, they're, making, they're making use of county services in terms of applying for a permit. They're making use of county inspection services in terms of applying for a permit. So we're charging them for that service. Right. Now, I won't. I'll be very forthright. What we're proposing to charge would not pay uh, 
uh, even with what we've got proposed, we will not pay for even 5%. But I guess what I'm saying is that people are building new houses, and that's what we're charging the fees for. So we're charging the growth. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So what you're going to be voting on here is to take this original uh, resolution that we had where we were adding it to 3,000. I had an amendment to that resolution to move it from 3,000, I mean 300, to, two, to 200. Yeah, so we're going to move it from 300 to 200 is the amendment on the floor. So if you want to do that, if you'd like to amend this resolution to move from 3 to 2, then you vote yes. If you don't want to, you vote no. Yes? Questions that will pertain to my decision. Okay. Uh, advertising. When you say that it costs uh, that much to advertise, can you speak to the number thing? Is it ad are they advertised individually or as a group? We're going to be getting into They're that. advertised as a group, but, but the advertisement is generally going to be uh, <coughs> between $1 and $200, as I understand. So if you have 10 people there, that's that right. is, you only have to advertise one time. That's, you do have to run the advertising, yes. that's right. So, but you only have to pay one time. We also have for each individual thing that's coming to the board. No, but what we do have to do individually is notify, which we do as a courtesy, not as a state law requirement, we notify joint property owners. So the more cases you have, the more joint property owners you have to research and mail out the postal store. That's the other expense that we're taking out. Commissioner Smith, is your question based on the amendment? Resolution? Yeah. yeah, for the amendment. Yeah. Okay, are you ready to vote? You're going to go from three to two to be a member of the resolution. If you're ready to vote, I ask you to cast your vote. <coughs> Brothers and Commissioner Breeze. All hearts and minds agree with your vote on the amendment. Record the vote. Fifteen yes, nine, no one. So the amendment passes to uh, from three to two hundred at that time. Now we're ready to vote on the original resolution as amended. Any other questions? Commissioner Smith? No? Okay. Are you ready to vote on the original resolution as amended? If so? So is it two hundred? Two hundred. Yeah. Two hundred. yeah. So amendment passes. So with two hundred, please cast your vote. All hearts and minds, good with your vote now. Please record. Twenty-one yes, three no. yes, three no. One absent resolution passes. Continue, Tom. Next item on the agenda is a resolution to amend the Lewis County Zone Ordinance establish clarifying establishing clarifying definitions and associated regulatory language for the term unserviceable vehicles. Uh, it establishes a definition for unserviceable vehicle. And then it, uh, the, the amendment proposes to put in several of the zone districts uh, language regarding the prohibition of such. Um, this initially came out of planning uh, following our current language, which we basically, by the definition of a, of a uh, automotive graveyard or animal automobile storage yard, both of which are already defined in zone ordinance, said that one or more vehicles that were unserviceable or that were, were in inoperable condition. Uh, you could have one, but you could not have any more than one on any residential property in the county. What the committee chose to do was recommend to you, I think, that, that could just be amended on the floor to allow two vehicles per lot uh, that are maintained in an unserviceable or inoperable condition. And when, in the terms of the definition of unserviceable vehicle, we, we have a fairly lengthy definition describing what, what we're talking about. Need a motion to get on the floor? So moved. Second. Second. Got a motion and second to get on the floor. Now discussion, Commissioner Marlow. Does this uh, deal with vehicles with four tires and wheels only, not motorcycles? It deals with anything motorized, forward, backwards, anything else. There are certain exceptions, uh, inclusive of uh, agricultural, dead farm trucks, tractors, things of that nature. But anything that's propelled by gas, propane, natural gas, electric, water, or solar powered engine in a forward and backward motion, that they must be able to move in the forward and backward motion at the request of the inspector. Commissioner Act? I think it's probably accurate. We'll make sure you're going to be able to do that. And number two, just a comment. I, I want to thank you all for how hard y'all work on, on this particular issue for a while. That's true. It, it is got to be time consuming as much as it is. But y'all do a great job doing it. 
appreciate it. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Can you give me the motivation of changing from one to two? The committee just in both in uh, deliberating over the point uh, felt that perhaps in one unserviceable vehicle was not. I'd like to try to answer that if possible. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my yeah. husband has a 72 kick dust. He probably loves better than me. He's <laughs> okay. taking three vehicles to make one. So most of the time when you've got those, you know, you need one vehicle to take this, that, the other off to make one. So that was our reason for that. Because most people that destroy vehicles, that's what they do. Commissioner Gentry? This is only in the county, not in the city. Not in the city. So we, don't, we do not have zoning jurisdiction in the city. So I have our own zoning jurisdiction. Commissioner Dow? What, what, what is the same for a farm? Because some of these places, like 10, 10 acres, 5 acres. Well, we typically dictate that something as agriculture, if it, if it qualifies for Greenbelt and has at least 15 acres or has 15 acres somewhere and another tract is 10 acres that they're using as part of their farm operation. Uh, and of course they have to have an agricultural operation. That, that definition is getting broader and broader as we speak in terms of changing the state legislature. Farm animals or you have to have farm animals? The definition of agriculture right now in the state of Tennessee includes entertainment uses. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, um, but what's accepted is something that's desert that's a designated farm truck, tractor, or other farm vehicle for specific use on commercial property that is involved in an active agricultural operation as determined by Greenbelt designation uh, within the county property system. <laughs> Such on site agricultural vehicles will not require proof of registration or current tags to be considered searched. That's the other part we defined to specifically include that. We've had a lot of questions. As a practice, we've all one of the things we've asked people, is this even registered current and things like that. We've had a few people ask us about this, and now we're trying to refine it so it's clear. Commissioner Pye? Uh, I was just wondering why I went from one to go to two, that was my question. Commissioner Smith? The only question was uh, for the properly tagged in this current registration, uh, the question would be if it could pass emissions or not. If it's signed with pass emissions, because sometimes it's the quote for a working on being. Yeah, of course. You heard from the legislature today, that's likely going away over the next few years. But, uh, <coughs> kind of stepped around that in the new definition, and then the new period is going to be pertinent. Where's your call? This is a little off track. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so I've got a lady So, what is uh, what are the restrictions of that working lot? We don't uh, we don't have anything. If it's if a if a car sales lot is allowed or a car repair lot is allowed, or oh, this is like a junkyard. It's not where yeah. it truck should be. But if it's if it's a if it's a junkyard, that's typically only allowed in the industrial districts. We do have a few that are grandfathered in. I mean, get with you. Okay, we and we may already know about it, but those are probably our and Mr. Ash uh, stated it's probably one of our most common complaints we get from cars is yeah. our neighbor. It's yeah. kind of like a business park and the guys get like eighteen or nineteen vans over there that are trash. And they're using it as a job. Let's see what some districts have been and what they're fixing and any other questions, Commissioner Marlowe? Call for questions. Commissioner Jane, call for it. Ready to vote? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The record reflects it's unanimous. Go ahead, Tom. The next item on the agenda is a resolution amending the Wilson County Zoning Ordinance to update specific aspects of the sign provisions found within the adopted zoning ordinance. And I'm giving and taking a little bit here. For years, people have been after us to allow some form of illuminated signs uh, in, in broader form in our commercial districts. Uh, I'm, I'm allowing for that. I'm also uh, accounting for state loud regulatory authority, uh, which the zoning ordinance did not do in terms of the height limitation. Everywhere in the county, traditionally, uh, the, the maximum height in the commercial zoning district for signs is 35 feet, uh, with the exception of Long I 40, where it would be permitted to be 50 feet. 
State Valley and Boyer Interstate 40 is now an interstate grade road, a federally part of the federal highway system. Uh, we felt like it was high time to allow that same permission along A40. So we've changed the height for Hitch Brook. One thing I did do is I backed up into some of our lower intensity commercial districts and uh, and residential districts and required signs to be ground mounted. So if you've got C1 major commercial scale, which many of our dollar generals might call them, some of them are in the under C2 or C3, many of them are in the C1 zone district. For instance, the one that covers, if it would have come through, if it hadn't already come through, it would have already gotten site numbers. But if it were come through now, it would require the, the sign on the ground mounted. Uh, Monument style sign <coughs> in the neighborhood <laughs> scale commercial districts. So, higher commercial districts can start. There a motion to approve. So, no move. Second. Second. Discussion now, Commissioner Jenkins. How would you only police the rest of this? Very, very thorough and detailed. <laughs> and we you just get an extra complaints. Sign. We, uh, we, we typically, well, what this is doing is taking away a lot of policing of. Illumination, we're allowing illumination. Well, I'm not saying we're not allowing it. I'm saying, yeah. like the signs that are not allowed, or there's that's so many feet, or whatever. Yeah, we, we typically, on, in a commercial district where most of this sign ordinance is going to apply, we're going to require a site plan approval for any construction oh, on the property. Yeah, so you're going to have to get, you're going to have to get a site plan approved for the site, and usually we'll ask people, hey, where's your sign going, what are your specifications? They'll either provide them with that site plan approval, or if they say, no, we're going to do the sign later, we'll say, okay, just know that you've got to come back in for a site plan approval for the sign. And they are grandfathered with current sign. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Any other questions before we vote? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The last item I have is a um, Resolution of the Wells County Zoning Ordinance to add a slab and cross face elevation requirement. Uh, it says within FEMA designated floodplain height and risk zones A and AE. Uh, I would appreciate an amendment, an amendment to the caption that says, and areas designated critical lot by the stormwater office, because the language has been changed under the ordinance to include those areas too. So basically, the, this would allow areas that are not in the regular floodplain zone. <coughs> Such as some of the areas that I've talked with here in the farm about lately, uh, that our stormwater office oversees and calls them critical lots, it will allow them to establish it and require that they do a have <coughs> a motion to accept the amendment. So moved. Motion to uh, agree. Mm -hmm. Put it on the floor. Okay. Yeah, there we go. All right. Here a motion to approve the ordinance. So moved. Second. Second. Now uh, the amendment. amendment. Uh, yeah, the amendment was just to add to the caption and areas designated critical lots by the stormwater office. Is there a motion to admit? So moved. And second. Sure. All in favor say aye. 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 So it is amended. Now we'll go back and vote on the resolution as amended. Unless I have questions. Seeing none, vote on the resolution as amended. All in favor say aye. 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 And opposed? Mr. Chairman, in closing, I'd like to tell the commission thank you. I really appreciate y'all humoring me for the evening agenda tonight. Um, like every one of these things uh, are things that make up a, you would be surprised how much time it takes, uh, particularly in the zoning administration office. And every one of these things are going to help us immensely in terms of streamlining our process, including the fix It's a big step up to Resolution of the Board of County Commissioners, West County, Tennessee, to adopt a continuing budget and tax rate for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2019, to authorize the insurance the issuance of tax anticipation notes for the county of Wilson. Mr. Burks. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing now, are you ready to vote? Please cast your vote.